May we have the confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. May we agree with one another. May we be the evangelists of the gospel of peace. With that, the title for today is Prejudice Out. Today's word, the book of Acts, surely contains significant meaning. When theologians pick the three great incidents in the book of Acts, it would be the incident of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in Mark's upper room on the day of Pentecost, the incident of Damascus, the conversion of persecutor Saul, and the last incident would be of today's passage of Acts chapter 10. The gospel to crucifixion and the resurrection of the cross that Peter proclaimed was that only through Jesus Christ we can receive forgiveness of sins and have eternal life. This uniqueness of the gospel was heard by Cornelius and his family and the Gentiles who were with him. To those who were listening to this word, the Holy Spirit came upon them. It was the Holy Spirit that came upon all those who were sitting there. Astonishingly, the gift of speaking in tongues took place. As the same works arose on the day of Pentecost, it was the descent of the Holy Spirit. That's why it is called the Pentecost of the Gentiles. It happened in the same way to the Gentiles, especially these three grand incidents tell us two important spiritual implications. First, it is the door of Gentile evangelization has officially opened. The great start of Gentile missions took place through God's sovereign providence and intervention. What shows that the time schedule has begun in full scale is the conversion of Cornelius, the centurion of the Roman Empire, his family and the Gentiles who were with them. It is something that can happen beyond our imagination. All of them had come back to the Lord. One more thing is that it was a time schedule to break the prejudice, which was the crucial obstacle to the evangelization of the Gentiles. The incident of the descent of the Holy Spirit in Mark's upper room on the day of Pentecost contains the meaning that the triune God himself fulfilling the covenant of Acts 1.8, not by the power of man. The word was precisely fulfilled. It was a time scheduled to break the prejudice of the Jews and religious leaders from Jerusalem as they witnessed the fishermen from Galilee, a region despised and disregarded at that time, speaking in tongues of each nation. Above all, it was a time schedule that broke the prejudice of the apostles, including the 120 disciples who were filled with the Holy Spirit. They learned that the works of the kingdom of God were not accomplished by their own strength and abilities, but by being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not by me trying, studying, me, 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 it's not needed. All you need is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So we don't have to have complicated prayers. Quite honestly, you don't have to pray about the little things. All you have to pray is for the filling of the Holy Spirit and then it will be over. It is being filled with Christ, evangelization, filling of the Holy Spirit, and the Word. It's not something that is vague. Persecutor Saul was also the same through the incidents of Damascus. He was so zealous in persecuting and killing those who believed in Jesus. But it was a time schedule to break Saul's prejudice, as he had firmly held on to what it was God's absolute plan. He said it was for God. I will kill those cults 
those so-called Christians. However, upon the incident of Damascus, as you can see in today's passage, it gives a new perspective, showing that there are countless numbers of souls among the Gentiles who are destined to be saved. A new view to look at the Gentiles, those pitiful souls who are doing idol worship. It's a time schedule to receive that. During that time, the Jews regarded the Gentiles as people who had no connection to the Messiah, considering them as outsiders of the covenant. They were treated as animals, those who are going to go to hell. They had that thought of only we're going to go to heaven. So they were not even greeted upon. It's the same thing right now. If you go to the pilgrimage, besides the Jews, they're all animals and they're all Gentiles. And they think that only they are going to receive salvation and the other people are outside salvation. So 2,000 years ago, can you ex imagine how far and worse it would have been. To that extent, they were filled with the spiritual prejudice. Even the disciples, the Jews who had heard of the covenant of Acts 1-8, including Peter, they were all Jews. They were not free from this prejudice. So they were unable to step freely forward. Prejudice carries the meaning of an unfair biased judgment and the Webster's dictionary interprets it as preconceived judgment it's preconceived instead of carefully considering all aspects and making judgments prejudice involves preconceived notions and fixed beliefs that leads to premature judgments in advance they don't even confirm it. They don't have conversations or meet that person. They just make that decision, listening to this and that upon their thoughts. The term answer set you is a perfect fit in the current expressions. The term answer set you is shortened for a person who has already set the answer before listening. I have set the answer so you can blab. It means that the answer is already predetermined. The answer is predetermined. You can say it, but it's predetermined. It refers to a person who predefines the answer that they want to hear and ask a question, like as if they want to manipulate the other person into giving the desired response. Living a life of the answer set you is similar to living the life of Saljong, a character derived from a Korean fable. It is one who speaks out of their own thoughts and opinions without engaging in any real communication with others. So they're so foolish. In other words, it represents the self-centered life of Genesis chapter 3. They don't care about how other people think. Moreover, the moment we have prejudice, our spiritual eyes become dim. It's that they are so stubborn where they only rely on their thoughts. They don't accept the variety within other people because people are all different. You must be able to say, oh, that may be so, and you may be able to embrace that. Those people who fail say, oh, that person is wrong because they think that they are only right. It's 0.2%. Where their business, where interpers their interpersonal relationships don't go right because they fall into their own thoughts. Do you think those people will be able to do evangelization? Missions? Gospelization of the 237 nations? No. 
They are captured and bounded by their own thoughts. What belongs to me? Not being able to have communication with others. It is a life of self-centeredness of Genesis chapter 3. They only care about themselves. The moment that you have prejudice, our spiritual eyes become dim. This is what is scary. It becomes dim. Our ears become closed from hearing. They only want to hear what they want to hear. And they don't listen to what they want to and have to hear. Of course, they listen. But they are not interested spiritually. They live closed off lives. Like today's message title, we have to completely live a life of prejudice out. When we are free from prejudice, we can experience spiritual growth and give spiritual influence. We can then become main figures of the team of three and the three movements. When other people say, oh, that person is a goof, will that be able to be right? They have to be able to say, oh, that person is so classy, even for the non-believers. Being closed off from their prejudice. Dear today's passage of message, I pray in the name of the Lord that all members of the one church will live a life free from prejudice and receive the evidence of the age with representative and commemorative fulfillment of spreading the gospel to the two, three, seven nations and 5,000 people groups. Three movements and the team of three. It is all to heal you. Those who are caught upon their prejudice they don't do this. The Holy Spirit works upon the church. So may you be able to take part in that. May you have prejudice out and be able to take part as the main figures of the gospelization of the 237 nations and 5,000 people groups. Number one, perspective of missions. Verse one reads, at Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion, of what was known as the Italian cohort. Caesarea Philippi was an administrative center of Judah, where Roman governor was placed. Caesarea Philippi was a city built for the Roman emperor by King Herod. That is why it was named Caesarea, meaning Roman Emperor. There was a official residence of the Roman governor. The name of the army was Italian cohort. It consisted of about 600 soldiers, had six centurions, and the tribune of the cohort was the supreme commander. Cornelius was one of the centurions, although it may seem small in number. He was a very promising elite general because the Italian cohort was the center unit to exhort the governor, even though it was small in number. Also, Cornelius distinctively believed in God. He was an elite. All his family stood in awe of God. All his relatives as well. Verse 2 reads, A devout man who feared God with all his household gave alms generously to the people and prayed continually to God. Cornelius's figure was totally different compared to the Roman soldiers who governed Judah in the colonial era. He did not suppress colonial people with power, but rather helped them. He always lived a spiritual phenomenous life by praying to God. He could have been mocked, crucified, or have been ostracized in the Roman military, but he did not care about that and feared God. He always prayed, continuously prayed. 
so he was different from the other Roman soldiers. Because they could have questioned, how can you believe in God? You are a Roman. But he did not care. He was an awe to God. However, unfortunately, Cornelius had a Jewish religious life. Because he believed in God through the Jewish religion. Religion. So he was still in the Old Testament era. He was still there. It was no longer age of the commandments, as the age of the commandments had ended by the blood of Jesus Christ. So there was no need to be in the word of law, humanism. The age of grace that anyone can receive salvation if they believed in Jesus had started. That was the age of grace, but he did not know. Because the Jews still did not know. Whether they were a Jew or a Gentile, when they believe in Jesus, they will receive salvation. The moment that they believe. Even for a shaman, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you will receive salvation. Those who came back to the Lord. So they can do favors of Satan, but when they accept Jesus Christ, they will receive salvation. The door of salvation was widely open to both the Jews and Gentiles. They were not saved by their actions of the commandments, but only by believing in Jesus Christ, only by faith. What was this? Without reason, it was the way of God. Other religions can say that does not make sense. How can you receive salvation by faith? You have to have good deeds, but no, it's by faith. Therefore, God saw it with his faith and sent an angel at the time of Cornelius' scheduled prayer and, con and instructed him to bring Peter who was in Joppa. Joppa was a city located about 50 kilometers south of Caesarea. But when you think about this region, Prophet Jonah may come to mind. When God told them to preach the gospel in the other, they ran away to Tarshish, and the port they boarded was Joppa. Joppa is the area that is now connected to where is Tel Aviv which is currently the administrative and international capital of Israel. The constitutional capital is Jerusalem, but because it is in, the, in a state of conflict with the Palestinians, because there are more Palestinians, it is not said that Jerusalem is the capital. It's where the Muslims are in hands of. So there's this conflict. At that time, Peter was evangelizing while staying in the house of Simon, who was a tanner in Joppa. Cornelius immediately obeys the word of the angel and sends his people to Joppa. Immediately obeying God. A person who is used by God immediately responds to God's word immediately. If you're not going to do it immediately, you're not going to be used. Cornelius, who was not bounded by his prejudice, did this immediately. He did not even doubt whether Peter, a Jewish man, would come after hearing the words of a Gentile like him. 
Oh, but he is an apostle. Would he come to me? He did not even doubt. Immediately, he obeyed. This is how God's answer comes to those who respond promptly to God's word upon the word upon prayer. When God touches your heart, do it immediately. In verse 9, God appears and shows a vision to Peter and Joppa to prepare him to meet Cornelius. Saying to prepare, he shows a vision. Verses 11 to 12 reads, saw the heavens opened and something like a great sheet descending and there were all kinds of animals and reptiles and birds of the air these animals were all unclean animals that god mentioned in leviticus chapter 11 and deuteronomy chapter 14. then peter heard a voice telling him to kill and eat those unclean animals but paul but Peter refused to eat them. I cannot eat it, is what he said. Then, for the second time, Peter heard a voice saying, What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and then it was taken up to heaven immediately in Peter's vision that God showed him, because he said, I cannot eat it. No, I will not. He did it three times. This vision represents letting go of all the prejudice that the Jews had against the Gentiles, whom they considered to be unclean. It's the message of saying, prejudice out. Jesus came down to this earth to break the barrier of prejudice. This was manifested through the cross and resurrection of Jesus Christ. In other words, we should view things from a missionary's perspective which aims to save lives. A perspective of missions. So, in a sense, it's that he had the perspective of a Jew. The thoughts he had before. Peter was still bounded by the Jewish prejudice even after the vision. While Peter was still inwardly perplexed about what the vision he had seen meant. The men whom Cornelius sent had arrived, and Peter heard a voice again. Acts 10.20 reads, Rise and go down and accompany them without hesitation, for I have sent them. After Peter heard the voice, he quickly let go of his prejudice. Peter then accompanied the men whom Cornelius sent to the house of Cornelius, a Gentile, and his meeting became an opening door for world missions. One politician said, if mankind could be freely free from all the prejudice, over 90% of the global problems would be resolved immediately. This means that many people who are still struggling and fighting with prejudice are out there. May you break that. Prejudice about your parents, spouse, children, fellow believers. It's there, but it's not right. May you break it. Then you'll be able to have oneness. Because so many people have prejudice, they have conflicts. If you have a lot of conflicts, it's that you have said prejudice. Oh, I really cannot understand that person. It's because of your prejudice. It's children of God who God saves, but you found that person by your prejudice. Separating or dividing is the weapon that Satan uses the most, and prejudice underlies inside that weapon. It's prejudice that lies within that. Once we let go of all our prejudice, it becomes the key to solve all problems. 
all will be unraveled. The same rule applies to our spiritual life. The moment we let go of all our prejudice and restore the perspective that saves lives, the evangelization of the two, three, seven nations and five thousand people groups will surely be fulfilled. I hope all you unbelievers will let go of not only prejudice against others, but also prejudice against themselves. I have been crucified with Jesus Christ. I do not exist. You must let that down, because you don't know who you are, and that's so pitiful. The moment that you believe in Jesus, you are the most special beings of God. You're the spiritual VVIP. There are seven billion people in this world, but there is no one who had. Been resoluted and who has been trained. So who are you? You are the most precious beings of God. When you look in the mirror, you may have wrinkles, and you may not have great finances, but every day you are a new person. Every day, you are so classy. Why am I so ugly? You will continuously be ugly. Why are you so good looking? Then you are good looking. You are the most valuable person. When you go home, say it ten times. It will happen according to your faith. It is true. You are the most precious beings, my God. If you cannot enjoy yourself, then how can you acknowledge other people having thoughts of inferiority? Then you'll not be able to have your. Skills exhort. We acknowledge it. Acknowledge your spiritual value. God even goes to the Gentiles, sending the servants of the Lord. But you are the saved children of God. He knows how many strands of hair you have. May be able to feel it. Oh God, how can you love me so much? There are so many people in this world, but how can you love me so much? Don't think, oh, it's a misconception. Even if it's a misconception, it's okay. So may you go to the place where you save all people. I bless in the name of the Lord that you will realistically experience the spiritual values and move toward to the place that saves lives. Number two, perspective of width, Acts ten, twenty-four to twenty-five. Peter arrives at Cornelius's house along with the people sent by Cornelius, and on、uh, and the way Cornelius receives Peter is truly astonishing. For Peter, who was a subject to the Roman Empire, the fact that a centurion bowing down at Peter's feet was beyond imagination. They were captives of Rome. But Cornelius, he was a centurion, but he bowed down upon Peter's feet. This itself, at that time, it was unimaginable. Those who receive grace, they are not prideful. Those people who are receiving grace, they are humble, and they don't have stiff necks because they value other people. Are you having broad shoulders because you did something? If you receive grace, are you going to be prideful? You have to always be hungry for it, being small in front of God. Then those people have potential. Cornelius received so much grace that he knelt down upon this uneducated fisherman. They are unable to compare physically, but Cornelius had this spiritual heart. With the friends and relatives, they were waiting. If you look at verse two, when Cornelius is introduced, it is mentioned that he was a devout Christian 
fearing God along with his whole household. He did not receive the gospel alone. He did not go to church alone. He desired that his family, relatives, and everyone he knew would receive this amazing news that Jesus is the Christ and receive salvation. It's not ending looking at the fact that Cornelius knelt down upon Peter's feet. Because God is alive, we have to go to heaven. So, our family needs to receive salvation. And he was confident that Peter would come. Therefore, he gathered them all at his house and waited for Peter. He had assurance that he would come and waited. Actually, the walk of faith begins in the one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. With a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. However, God never wants us to stay in that place alone. What is mine? Our church. He does not want that. Like Cornelius, he wants to save all people. The team of three. Saving everyone. Saving all our families, relatives. Is salvation through Jesus Christ truly changed my destiny? We should not be satisfied with the fact that salvation only happens to me. We should not be content there. If you really receive salvation, you must meet, be able to make on that covenantal challenge. That's the work of the team of three. Oh, that person has so much grace and faith. How do you know? You can see when you see that person save souls. Oh, that person truly received a lot of grace. For those who did not receive grace, what they cannot do is evangelization. They don't even look at Team of Three. It has nothing to do with them. Because they did not receive grace. If you look at the passage, Peter and Cornelius talk about what had happened. And they realize that it is God's special plan of God. Moreover, Peter confesses in verses 34 to 35. Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partially. But in every nation and tongue, who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to him. This is a time that Peter fully let go of his prejudice. He found out God's special time schedule towards salvation of the Gentiles. So Peter immediately sent the gospel of peace sent by Jesus Christ to Cornelius and the Gentiles with him. Ten. 44. So, for Peter, to those who receive the Holy Spirit, he gave baptism. And Cornelius asked to stay with them for a few more days. And during that time, he gave the answer that Jesus is the Christ. You can see those who are connected to the royal family. And many people appear in Romans chapter 16. And it's before Apostle Paul arrived in, in Rome. So biblical scholars speculate that their conversion may have been influenced by Cornelius, a centurion who had served the military in Judah in, and later returned to Rome. So it is believed that Cornelius played a role in spreading the gospel in the heart of Rome. The people who God had prepared for 
evangelization of Rome was not only Apostle Paul, but also Cornelius. God has prepared each nation and every tongue for the evangelization for the two, three, seven nations and 5,000 people groups of the Sarah. He has prepared you. May you believe in this. Although I am not able to go to the place of missions, God is making me pray through my hands. As you have given me a nation, may I be able to pray for that nation. That one person is important. With a firm conviction, I bless you in the name of the Lord that in the latter half of the year of 2023, may we all come together for a covenantal challenge in the three movements through the team of three becoming the absolute disciples of Christ. This is the conclusion. There's a verse in Acts 10 that we should deeply be engraved in our hearts. It is Acts 10, 15, which says, What God has made clean, do not call uncommon. God has made clean. Do not call it common by your prejudice. This verse carries a powerful message of missions. It urges us to abandon prejudice about who can be saved and who cannot. It emphasizes that everyone we encounter is a potential recipient of salvation. Therefore, the gospel must reach to the ends of the earth. Today, the mission team is departing for the field of Bali, Indonesia. I have explained in detail during our Friday prayer service that Indonesia is a country with the largest Muslim population in the world. It's a field where salvation is absolutely needed. Bali in particular is a unique island where the majority follow Hinduism. It is globally known as a tourist area, but spiritually it is a place filled with the stronghold of darkness and where the baptism of Satan is established. In order to firmly establish the baptism of Christ in this spiritually dark place, the mission team is embarking on this team. I encourage you to pray for the spiritual battle as the campsite at the campsite during this week when you as mighty warriors pray establishing a partisan of intercession there will be a spiritual shift in Bali. We already got the phone call of s requesting the broadcast of the Yewan Church pulpit. May the entire team, like Cornelius, encounter prepared disciples, and may they all, like Peter, lay down all prejudice and become the evangelists of the gospel of peace. In the name of the Lord, may all believers of Yon Church stand as the main figures of missions of the 237 nations. Let us pray. Dear Father God, may we not be able to be within the snares of Satan, but have prejudice out. God looks at the center of our hearts. So how can we deceive God, like the clean Cornelius, may we always have clean hearts and be anew. May we be able to acknowledge each other and be able to have the team of three movements. May we be the people of peace. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen.